like schools, and we'll okay. talk about uh, we'll talk about St. Joe Hamilton, oh, which uh, of course only you know had to play the one game really in the playoffs, and uh, they of course had uh, quite an answer for that one game, winning fifty-one to nothing over St. Mary's of Rutherford. It was uh, for St. Joseph Hamilton now their twenty-first state title, twenty under head coach Paul Sacco. The team has a seven fifty winning percentage in the postseason. They've uh, won thirty-six games, lost just twelve. Over that time, they've been in the finals 29 times. You got a lot of stats. I mean, you know, it just. Mike Ford, Mike Ford, he, he, he might, you know, when he decides to give it up that night, he might be the stat guy. Maybe. But you know the numbers. I might have to be. There you go. Hey, but, but talk I about told you last week, what did I tell you last week? That it wasn't going to be if they win, it's by how much. And how many did I tell you would be the, 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 uh, the, uh, I think the number? I said 40 something. 45. Yeah, yeah I told you the 45 was good. 51. 51 nil. <laughs> <laughs> no problem for the Wildcats. <laughs> yeah, nobody thought it was going to be a problem for them. No. Not at all. I mean, it's just a totally different brand of football that, that they play compared to the the lower groups up north, and uh, obviously that showed. Um, you know, if you know St. Joe, you want to talk about our team of the year, everyone knows that that's the team of the year. There's, right. no, there's no surprise there. They end up number one. Once they got the number one spot after beating Holy Spirit, that was it. And, uh, you know, if you check out the paper on, uh, I believe in Sunday's edition, yes. we'll have the the, the the display on the team of the year. That the, their numbers are just are just mind boggling, and um, you know people will say, well, they didn't play anybody. Their strength of schedule wasn't that great, and everything. But you know what? They still had to go out and do what they, you know, can't just go out there and say, okay, game over, we win by, you know, we win. But they went out and. You know, they owned the field every time they stepped on and it. And they so. did beat some good teams. I mean, they beat Holy Spirit. They beat Hamilton. They beat a couple of quality teams yeah. that, that did play uh, in, in state final games. So sure. it's not like they played nobody all season. They, You know, there certainly were some uh, easier teams than, sure. than your maybe your typical uh, West Jersey Football League American division might throw at you every week. But right. nevertheless, they played who they, they, who they played, who was on their schedule, and they beat the teams – uh, that they had to beat, including a couple of good, good squads. It wasn't a beat. It was a beat yes. down every yes. team they played. So, not even, not even close. Very, uh, a very thorough season. You know, got their ten games, but in ten games they were completely thorough. And uh, the, the, the numbers are just, the numbers are just. When you look at them, they just jump out at you. And Kevin, they finished uh, as you said, the number one team in the Courier Post rankings. Sure. Uh, just uh, maybe, just highlight that team a little bit about you know, their, what made them so special. I mean, the play was it. You know, were there certain players on this team that really carry? Oh, um, sure. I mean, then they, they, the first things, the, the two names that jump out, uh, jump out at you will be Kawan Lewis going to South Carolina, and Max Valley's going to Virginia. Um, Lewis playing a linebacker, and, and Valley's playing on defensive end. Those are the two names that jump out at you. But if you go to watch them play, you can, you it's clearly, demonst- you know, they, they clearly demonstrate that they have more than just those two guys, and they just are, are defensively just go, to, go, they swarm to the football. They hit hard. They make plays offensively. They will run the football, and uh, this year they, they you know they mix it up a little bit more. They Anthony Giajunta, Giajunto, um, he threw the ball a lot more than probably they have in a while, and um, you know he threw for I believe eight hundred and close to nine hundred yards, which probably hasn't happened in a while down there mm-hmm. because they run the football so much. So they opened it up. Uh, Paul Sacco talked a little bit about that, about opening up the offense a little bit, and maybe he surprised a few teams. Maybe a few teams weren't ready for. For what they had to, to offer, but uh, you know, the running backs of uh, Kaheem Reynolds, Eli Pogue, Dal Smith, you know, they just chewed it up. And, and you know, defensively between Lewis and uh, Vallis, Corey Litton, uh, Charles Cade, I mean, uh, they just were just were just you know phenomenal for a lack of a better word. So they truly deserved everything they got. And what's one last thought on St. Joe's? The fact that they're such a small school, but they have this tremendous tradition of winning football. And it's amazing ability to win year after year after year with a real small population. Uh, I mean, like, it, it can, is it hard to fathom? I mean, you think mm. about, I mean, how many bo- how many, what do they have, uh, maybe 200 boys in the whole school? I don't think there's that many. If that? There may be less than, there mm. may be around 100. So, okay. But the thing is, you know, if, let's face fact, if you're an eighth grader and you're in a, you're in an area in which St. Joe is, is a, is a choice for you, mm-hmm. you see what they do. If you're a pretty good eighth grade football player and, and you have some some options, mom and dad are going to give you some options. There you go. You know, mm-hmm. it, it, there, it just proves it right there. I mean, you don't have to look too much further. The numbers are there, the success is there, the tradition is there. And if if uh, you know you're a decent eighth grader and 
and you get in there and you know you know what to expect and you're willing to do that as a you know eighth grade what 13 14 year old kid mm. so maybe as a freshman you're 15 you know you know what you're getting into and if you can take it and that's you know my kid played football and he was that good and I had that opportunity that option you know you probably you know you could probably take a serious look at it nice. they get they get they get some talented kids so Interesting. I can't, want to get you can't argue thoughts that. about that because I thought I mean most of the, most of the kids on the team are not from Hamilton. Mm, right. Very very few mm. kids on that team are from Hamilton. So why well, know they draw from you know surrounding areas, Atco, sure. and probably even some from I guess Washington they, Township. But I don't, I don't know think there's too many that, Township kids uh, there, but I know there's some Williamstown mm. kids there that they'd love to be able to keep in Williamstown. <laughs> but uh, you know, he's, there's nothing there's nothing wrong with what happens. It's just it, it is what it is, and you know they get the kids and. Paul Sacco does a, a nice job of uh, developing those kids into the, into some talented players. So St. Joe's wins that uh, non-public one. They won that on Saturday uh, of last week. Let's talk about non-public group two. And uh, I guess, you know, the final score, Holy Spirit wins 51-7. I guess if you talk about the weekend as a whole, the score of that game was probably maybe the most surprising thing that happened.